bipolar meds uh, with kids. Now this is collapsing the data, okay, so this is the mess we're talking about. It's got narrow phenotype, broad phenotype. Okay, look, two studies, age 10 to 17, bipolar one, trileptal, Depakote alone, monotherapy, neither of them better than placebo. That's really different than you get with adults that have bipolar, okay? Not better than placebo. Here, again, uh, lithium and, and an antipsychotic, only slightly better than lithium and placebo. And uh, typically, you've got to use lithium and Depakote, and there you get about 40% effectiveness, and that's about as high as you get with kids that have so-called bipolar disorder. Yeah? I'm just wondering if you think um, that the issue is more that medications or the regimens that we have so far don't work, or if there's kids included in this that really aren't bipolar? I think it's both. Did everybody hear what you said? I really do. I, I think there's a lot of diagnostic confusion, and all these kids are put into a blender, you know, and treated like they're the same. But I also think, there, but it's not just a personal opinion. I think, you know, the child psychiatry people who write about this say, uh, we've done this before, try to use adult meds to treat kids. Kids are not just adults that are smaller. You know, their brains are different, uh, they, they have different disorders. This is probably maybe a distant relative to bipolar disorder because it tends to run in families, but it's not the same disorder. Okay. I think it's probably both. Now, this is interesting. That back about 30 years ago, there was a guy, and you know, I cannot remember his name, but I heard about this years ago, and everybody thought he was, uh, you know, just totally off the deep end. And, and what, he, what this guy did is he looked at blood levels of lithium and then got brain levels of lithium. And the only way you can get brain levels of lithium is to do a spinal tap, okay? So this is not going to be done in a clinical setting, but only in a research setting. But, and, and this has been now rediscovered, okay? So it's like, hey, wait a minute, maybe he was on to something. Okay, you get teenagers and adults and you measure their lithium level in the blood, and let's say it's 1.0. You measure their brain level, it's also 1.0. It's always been assumed, oh, okay, okay, that's way. But what he found was that in pre-adolescence, if you measure their blood level of lithium and it's 1.0, it's about half that in their brain. And the reason for that is not clear. You know, I mean, the two possibilities are that either for some reason in younger people, lithium doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier as readily. That's a possibility. It may be that it's being eliminated from the brain more quickly. Uh, the, the answer to the why is this the case is not known. But there are experimental studies starting a couple of years ago, and the jury is still out. What if we try really jacking up the doses uh, uh, and, and the blood levels of lithium as long as it's tolerated by kids and see if, in fact, different dosing approach is going to make a difference? And, again, the results are not uh, not available yet. Uh, let's see, I think we look, looked at this at this data before. Also here, look at this average age. This is Barbara Geller. She's one of the sort of preeminent researchers. Uh, of those kids, these are ch uh, children, you can see the average age is around 11, 10 or 11. Uh, of those who did respond, okay, and most of them had to have lithium and Depakote, look at this, 55% relapsed after recovery in the meantime to recovery was, uh, excuse me, to the next episode was only 28 weeks. Uh, we're talking of, uh, about, I think the truth is that psychiatry hasn't found the answer, okay? And these kids are suffering. I mean, the first thing is do no harm. Don't give them any antidepressants, but the, the drugs are not there. This is looking like probably the best drug to use with kids that are in this ill-defined group of so-called bipolar disorders in a Seroquel. And the reason for this has to do with efficacy and tolerability. You don't, have to, uh, you don't have to do nearly as many laboratory tests with Seroquel like you do with lithium, okay? You have to watch for metabolic symptoms like weight gain. You have to measure twice a year cholesterol, triglycerides, and glucose, blood glucose, okay? But that's not a big deal. You take one blood test and that's it, okay? And with kids, uh, multiple laboratory tests can be kind of traumatic, you know, especially like with lithium, having to do multiple blood draws and stuff like that. You don't have to measure Seroquel levels, for instance, okay? It treats both depression and mania, and it's generally well tolerated. So probably right now, this is the best bet in terms of first-line treatment. Instead of going to drugs like Depakote and lithium that potentially have huge problems with potential side effects.
Okay, now another trivia question. And a lot of drugs uh, that given to kids, uh, if they can't swallow pills, then you have to give it in liquid form. And at least, I've never tasted uh, liquid antipsychotics before, so I have to go on what I've read. But apparently, liquid antipsychotics are especially foul tasting. So you can go to any pharmacy now, and they have snow cone syrup available that they will mix in with whatever the liquid medicine is to make it sweeter so it doesn't taste as bad. Now, in a recent survey of children who are taking liquid antipsychotics, what do you think is their number one favorite snow cone syrup flavor? Bubble gum, cherry, grape. Excellent choices, but <laughs> and it's a psychiatrist called R&R, &R, Respiradol and Raspberry. 